when I was a child, I had a dream, and in the dream I was very afraid. Something was chasing me and I was trying to get away from it. I remember it now that I'm talking about it very, very lucidly. I thought in my mind, well, if I go up, then I'll be able to get away if I were to fly. So I remember jumping up into the air, and then all of a sudden, I, I'll never forget it, I remembered that this wasn't real. This is a dream. It's almost like from that moment, like something in my brain kind of broke, and now my mind knows that it's not real. A lucid dream is a dream in which you know you're dreaming as you're dreaming. Within the lucid dream, you can intentionally engage the source of your nightmares. Lucid dreaming can transform these nightmares into spiritual and psychological growth. I meet a lot of people who want to learn lucid dreaming for a lot of different reasons. Uh, I work with a lot of nightmare sufferers, people working with post-traumatic stress. I'm recently working with a guy who's, who's dying, who, who's approaching death and wants to use it to prepare for death. I work with ex-soldiers who are working with post-traumatic stress coming back from Iraq. Um, I work with people who want to cure nicotine addiction. You know, one of my uh, uh, most interesting case studies of last year was a guy called Antonio who cured himself of 11 years of nicotine addiction in one lucid dream. I work with people who are looking for um, uh, advice on their life path. One day when I was a teenager, I had another nightmare of like a giant snail or slug or something. He was chasing us in our family car. And I was just fed up with it, and so I like grabbed a machine gun and I leaned out the car window and I, did, you know, shot it to pieces. I suppose in this case, uh, the violence resulted in a successful resolution because actually I never had a nightmare again. <laughs> Most people don't feel like they have any control over their nightmares because they're asleep, they're unconscious, it just happens to them. Lucid dreaming gives them that power to do something a little bit more helpful in their lives. The way I use it in therapy is usually to address nightmares so people can learn to respond differently to the dream imagery if they know that they're dreaming. So there I am, face to face with this demon, fully lucid, so I know I'm in my own head and I know there's no real threat, but it's still pretty scary. Within my embrace, this big three-headed shadow monster starts to shrink, and I keep holding on and it keeps shrinking, and then it stops. And there's a moment of stillness. I release my embrace, and I realize I'm hugging myself. As a dreamer, you can be a very, very logical, very scientific person, very structured, but you can allow your dreams to have this enchantment in them. As a lucid dreamer, I think it's important for people to enchant their dreams and allow information to come from other places, allow dream characters to be whatever they want to be. When I see a red car, I'll remember to ask, am I awake or am I dreaming? And you can't just ask yourself, you have to really test it. And so gravity tests, um, see if you can change the color of something in your field of vision, checking text to see if it looks stable. You have to really be careful because, again, dreaming can fool you. I mean, you can, even a very experienced dreamer can do these checks and not do them well enough and think that you're awake when you're not. You know that old saying, if you pinch yourself to see if you're dreaming? Forget about that in a lucid dream. If you pinch yourself in a lucid dream, you'll just feel the pinch. And then you'll probably become fascinated at the hairs on your arms.
they would put a, a large importance on dreams and and how that that world is just as important as the real world you know that's where your visions come from that's where uh, spirit communicates to you where creator communicates to you is through your dreams when I was growing up I was growing up uh, very much entrenched in the in the Christian culture I can remember having visions in my dreams and there was a woman that would come to me. A few months before my father uh, was killed, I had a dream of him dying. And I told my parents, but they didn't believe me at all. You know, they, they, they just, you know, try to calm me down. You know, it's just a dream, it's just a dream, it's nothing. I didn't want it anymore. I didn't, I didn't want it. It scared me. Um, the Christian culture doesn't allow, you know, for prophetic dreams, you know, they, they, don't, they don't make room for that. Um, you know, it's like, these were the prophets and, and that's it, you know. So I, I prayed it away and it left and it was gone. And from that moment on, it's, it's been very difficult for me to remember my dreams. in one way or another, but I always find it more satisfying when I resolve conflicts um, through non-violent means. I mean, I, certainly in dreams, it's very easy to resolve conflicts through violent means. I mean, you know, I don't like, you know, the people in this building were bothering me. I'm going to lift up the building and, you know, smash it far away. I've done that before. And then the strangest thing was, right after that happened, a dream figure appeared to me, and he asked me, why did you do that? And I said something like, I don't know, they were, they were bothering me. And he, he didn't really judge, he just said, I'll go look for survivors. And I felt really guilty because, okay, it's just a dream. I mean, probably none of those people were real, but can I really take that risk? <laughs> but that takes a bit of creativity because how do you resolve a conflict non-violently? What, do what does it actually take? What works? If you use aggression or if you use destructive forces, then what you tend to get back are dreams that are destructive or have aftermath. And this is also one of the amazing aspects of dreams that they have this inner wisdom that teaches us how to be better people. It's a place where your thoughts and your feelings are instantly manifest in that world. One of the very earliest lucid dreams I had, I found myself you know, just talking with this dream character, um, having a very long conversation and it was kind of funny because I asked him if he was interested in dreaming and he was like, no. <laughs> He's like, you know, I only read history. <laughs> um, he, was, he took a very dismissive attitude toward it. it. It seemed irrelevant. At the time that it was, that it was initially presented to me, it just didn't, dreams didn't seem like, I, it, it seemed like something fun to do, uh, like a video game or another form of escape. Um, but it wasn't until I had um, a very, um, very poignant trip on acid that, that I was able to kind of um, see the importance of the dream and see how it's, it's through, the, through dreaming and stuff like that that you, you practice things that you will bring into, into this daily life. Do something in the physical world, do it in your dreams. And when you experience it in your dreams, guess what? It could be every bit as satisfying as it would be in the physical world. You can experience having jewels. You can experience being with some European model. You can experience climbing the top of a mountain. You can experience being in a beautiful house, you know, by the sea. You can experience being famous. You can experience it. Feel it. It's real to you. It's in a dream. And you have it, and then you're done with it. The point, which I think we've really hit on that's important, is the feeling is the same. 
You understand what I'm saying? That feeling of satisfaction, fulfillment, achievement. Oh. So if you eat something in a lucid dream, you're tasting with your mind, not your tongue. So you're tasting way beyond the sensation of the waking state. When you have an orgasm in, in the lucid dream, it's a full mind orgasm, not just a body orgasm, because of course it's, it's generated, it's coming from the mind. What if you could dream without limits? You could use your time in dreams to do anything. Climb Everest, battle a dragon, or explore distant planets. So what do you want to dream about? Hi, I'm Andrew. And I'm Danny and we're the co-founders of iWinks. We've been working for the past couple of years on this revolutionary new lucid dreaming device called the Aurora. The Aurora allows you to have lucid dreams regularly. And it's a really exciting product. There's really nothing out there like it. So what is lucid dreaming and why is it awesome? In a lucid dream, you actually recognize the fact that you're dreaming. The Aurora is a comfortable headband that you wear to sleep that actively monitors your sleep stages throughout the night. Not only does it sense brain waves, but it also contains an accelerometer that tracks body movements. Dreams occur almost exclusively during REM, which is just one sleep state of many that we cycle through multiple times each night. When you're dreaming, the Aurora plays audiovisual cues to help you recognize that you're in a dream. These cues are designed to be subtle enough that they find their way into your dream without actually waking you up. And usually when this happens, and you become aware of the safety of the world that you're in, you can do anything you want. And really take control of the events of the dream, or just sit back and enjoy it, and watch it as it unfolds in front of you. When you have that first experience, um, you know, you want, you want to seek it out every night. Uh, and so, you know, that's, that's really what we're trying to do. We want, want to make sure that people get to that first experience as soon as possible, you know, without all the frustrating, uh, you know, training that, that goes along with, you know, the normal, normal techniques. We put, you know, the Aurora right next to, uh, you know, the Oculus Rift. We really do believe that uh, when you get to that level of experience with the lucid dream, it is on par, if not even, you know, more exciting than virtual reality. There's research out there that, that, that suggests that you can get better at virtually any task uh, just by practicing and visualizing it during your dreams. Yeah, even physical tasks. Yeah, yeah, especially, especially physical. Yeah. So these, th that was the experiment that was, or one of the experiments that were performed. Uh, uh, someone, uh, if someone's training to do some, some physical thing, if it's cross-country skiing or something like that, if you dream about yourself doing it, you'll get better at it in real life. You have a dream team at work at night. You know, if you're a novelist, I mean, some novelists have their, their novels are written for them by their dreams. You know, Robert Louis Stevenson said he had a, I forget what he called them, gremlins or grimmies or, he had a team of these little fuzzy creatures that would write all his stories for him. And he'd be in the dream, he'd say, hey, what you got for me now? I say, is this all you did? Come on now. You know, I'm paying you guys good money. I expect more output than this. And then he'd like remember what they wrote and then he'd write that down in the waking state. So he said he wasn't even writing his own stuff. He had outsourced it to these little creative creatures that were in his dream state. I mean, how crazy is that? In dreams, I can make up songs just off the spur of the moment, sometimes with words even. Um, in ways that I would never be able to do in life. There are many theories as to why dreams exist and what they what they do. Um, I, I I personally anyway I personally really like the the concept of dream uh, dreams as a simulator as a life simulator. That in during evolution when we were when we were still in the jungle and we faced predators, um, dreams were uh, were used to simulate different scenarios that we would be faced with if we were being chased by some predator and um, in doing so would prepare us to deal with this scenario without locking up and freezing and being overwhelmed by the possibilities. When I was really into lucid dreaming I actually had a a uh, dream partner that was married. I was in a relationship, they were married. In other words, I wasn't married, but I was in a serious relationship. And they were actually married, and we would meet in dreams and uh, make love. 
if dreaming becomes a shared experience, then I think you would run into some of the same difficulties as we have with multiplayer games, then that we wouldn't be able to have as much control over the environment, because our control might be, you know, in competition with someone else's control. And how long before we would be in an environment which was more or less, you know, <laughs> like waking life, where we have very little control because we kind of have to share it with everybody. Every night when you fall asleep, you go through the same dissolution of consciousness that occurs at the point of death. So if you can fall asleep consciously, there's the potential to die consciously. And to die consciously is the highest meditation achievement.